In 2008, Lovick Howden Stike Leather III was serving time in prison for drug-related offenses. While in prison, Stike Leather became a member of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. The ABT is a white supremacist gang operating both inside and outside the prison system. The ABT regularly and continuously engages in criminal activities in Texas. When he became a member of the ABT, Stike Leather signed a blind faith commitment, acknowledging that his membership was for life and that he would follow any ABT order without question. Members who violate the blind faith commitment often receive severe consequences, ranging from beatings to death. The ABT has five geographic regions in Texas. Each region is headed by a different general. Below the general, each region also has an outside major, inside major, captain, lieutenant, and sergeant of arms. At the time of the offense, Byrd held the highest rank for the ABT in the free world for North Texas. When Stike Letter got out of prison in November 2013, he lived with a woman named Sherry Turner in Sansom Park. He was supposed to check in with Byrd upon his release from prison. Stike Leather, however, did not check in with Byrd because he no longer wanted to be a member. On January 28, 2014, approximately six ABT members went to Turner's house looking for Stike Leather. Two members went to the front door and two members went to each side. The men eventually left, however, after the police were called to the scene. The next day, the men returned to Turner's house again looking for Stike Leather. Stike Leather was not home and the men left. Turner was upset that the ABT members came to her house, so she called Stike Leather and asked him to take care of it. When Stike Leather arrived back at Turner's house, he called ABT members Michael Young and asked to be picked up. Young, along with ABT member Charles Garrett, picked up Stike Leather and took him to a different house in Sansom Park. When they arrived at the house, Garrett led Stike Leather to the back bedroom where ABT affiliate Nicholas Acree was waiting. Garrett told Stike Leather that he didn't know what was going on, but he got an order from Bird to strip him and zip him. Garrett and Acree then removed all of Stike Leather's clothes and zip tied his hands behind his back. They next led him to a laundry room, tied his feet, and told him to lie down and wait because Bird was not there yet. Approximately three hours later, Bird walked into the laundry room and stomped on Stike Leather's head three times. When Stike Leather rolled to the side to avoid getting stomped again, Bird kicked him in the lower back. Bird then pulled out a gun and pointed it at Stike Leather and began interrogating whether he was working for another gang or not. Bird put the gun in Stike Leather's mouth and asked Acree, You think I should just kill the motherfucker? When Acree responded no, Bird removed the gun from Stike Leather's mouth and after some discussion told Stike Leather, For me letting you walk out of here today, you're going to pay me a thousand dollars a month. And the next time you disrespect me, you're going to be dead. Bird then pulled a knife from his belt and said, to see you know that I'm serious? And he stabbed Stike Leather twice in the left shoulder. Bird then ordered Acree to untie Stike Leather. Acree brought Stike Leather out of the laundry room and into the kitchen and gave Stike Leather his clothes back. But Stike Leather was bleeding way too bad to put his shirt back on. Noticing the bad blood, Bird grabbed a piece of bread from the kitchen counter and asked Stike Leather if he knew what a blood oath was. Stike Leather responded, of course he did. Bird then dabbed the bread onto Stike Leather's bloody wound, tore the bread in half, and ate half of it. He shoved the other half in Stike Leather's mouth and made him eat his own bloody bread. Stike Leather returned to Turner's house early the next morning. He did not seek medical treatment nor report the crime to police for fear of retaliation. Authorities learned about the assault against Stike Leather from Department of Homeland Security's monitoring of phone calls by incarcerated members. When Stike Leather was later arrested for possession of methamphetamine, authorities discussed the assault with him. Stike Leather agreed to cooperate with authorities in exchange for a downward departure and a dismissal of a Wessel weapons case. At Burr's trial, Stike Leather was the only person to give a first-hand account of the assault. Other witnesses testified that they saw Stike Leather with stab wounds shortly after the assault, but they did not witness the assault itself. The state, however, introduced cell tower records showing that they were both there at the same time. Bird challenges the admission of that evidence on appeal. The state also introduced evidence at trial demonstrating Bird's rank and involvement in the ABT using recorded jailhouse calls and letters wrote back and forth to inmates. A phone call was intercepted between AB member Joey Kemp, who was incarcerated, and his wife Megan Kemp. 
Joey also spoke to Bird during the phone call. Bird argues that the trial court erred by admitting the recording because it contained hearsay and violated his rights. The phone call, which lasted approximately eight minutes, begins with a brief, a brief greeting between Joey and Megan in which some expletives are spoken. Bird then gets on the phone and encourages Joey to keep his head up and to rep it. Joey expresses concern about not being able to see and take care of his family anymore, and Bird reassures him that Megan has support. Joey then tells Bird about his plan, plan to pursue a plea deal in the case. Bird tells Joey to keep his head down and be sure he knows who these dudes are before he exposes himself. Joey and Bird then discusses Joey's need for money to hire an attorney and need for money to be placed on his books. Bird then gets off the phone in the final minute of the phone calls between Joey and Megan. Joey asks Megan to ask Bird what rank should he hold while in prison. Megan is heard asking someone this question, presumably Bird, and then she relays the answer. Inactive, Joey. You'll be inactive. The state used a recording to proffer expert testimony explaining how Bird had control of the ABT. The state also introduced numerous letters demonstrating Bird's authority and influence over the ABT. Several letters were admitted that that were written to Bird by incarcerated ABT members in which the ABT members paid their respects to Bird and inquired about ABT matters. The trial court also admitted a letter written by Bird to Big Wood that Bird asked to be circulated to all confirmed members in Big Wood's area. In that letter, Bird provides guidelines that are to be upheld without question, including the need to collect information from all bros that every brother is to maintain weekly contact no matter what and that dues are mandatory, and that they're to be paid the first of each month. After the trial concluded, the jury decided Bird was guilty, and he was punished at 50 years confinement in the state of Texas. Of course, the state of Texas confirms gang members like this and places them in administrative segregation. So Bird will have to do those 50 years in solitary confinement by himself, without much contact from other inmates and probably have to serve the whole 50. It's a rough life in a prison gang, y'all. Think about it before you decide to join one. Preferably don't sign, join one. But I guess if you do, you better follow the rules or you're going to end up like Stike Leather. Stabbed, eating some bloody bread and having to rat and go to PC while you do your time. Not exactly what you want, fellas. I always send a message. Stay out of prison. Stay free. Raise your kids. Take care of your family. Salute to Mr. Bird. I hope your time's not too hard.